Then I ask if the thin new Elizabeth is haunted by the fear that the old Elizabeth could come back. No, not at all, because I'm in control. It's up to me. I got myself there. I got myself out of it. Nobody else. Uh, nobody else can do it for you. Don't you think if you're offering yourself as a role model that you have to fess up and say, you lose 60 pounds, you've got to have some professional. Well, I haven't had a facelift. Uh, I had a, uh, a chin tuck, and that's all. That's all it takes, really? That's all it took me. I was very lucky. Um, my skin went back. People think I've had suction, uh, that I've had facelifts. I haven't. I did have uh, the loose skin pulled up here. And that's all. Sorry. That's the truth. Your good looks, do you underestimate the advantage they give you to face the process? I don't know. I really don't think about what I look like because I don't think what you look like on the outside and don't, I mean, I hope this doesn't sound uh, 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 conceited. I really don't think what you look like is important. I think it's what you are that's important. So what? And I think what you are really makes you look what you look like. So why are we here talking about losing weight? So what if you were but overweight? You feel so much better. You live longer. You have more energy. I felt so good inside after I'd been to the Betty Ford Center. It was like the outside didn't match the inside and I thought it was time to get the things coordinated. Did going to the Betty Ford Center for alcohol and drug-related problems, do you think it would take something like that for some obese people? No. It's, uh, it's not food a, is a different a kind of addiction. addiction. I think I used uh, the principle of AA a lot in my diet, as I mentioned in the book. Uh, it's like one day at a time, one step at a time. It just if you can refuse that piece of candy for five minutes, um, think about it, and just then another five minutes, and you get past that craving, then you can put it aside and you don't take it. If you can do that with booze, you can do it with food. The booze thing is so far, it's like in a different room or a different building from where we're sitting and discussing food. Is alcohol a problem? For you now, or is that no, oh that's no. that's history? Yeah. Uh, as I said, the only craving I get is for sweet things. You claim to be a chocoholic. Yeah, well, I am. You are a sweetaholic. Do you use that phrase um, in a serious, addictive sense, or just in casual? Everybody likes sweets. Uh, I don't crave anything else but sweet things. I mean, it's, it's hard for me. I, I do get a sort of, I, as, as I say in the book, the way I get around it is to uh, have people that I'm with order desserts and describe them to me. You spoke earlier about, offhandedly almost, about marriages and so forth. And you said maybe you wouldn't get married again. This is new from, from you. Knowing myself. <laughs> I really am addictive. <laughs> Knowing myself, I'm sure that one day, uh, I don't know when, but, but before I die, I'm sure I'll marry once more. I don't know when. I certainly have no intentions at the moment and nobody um, in mind or in sight. Uh, I'm really enjoying my life. I. I hope I don't enjoy being single too much. I really would like to get married once more. You have, have written a book on health and diet, and in it have told intimate things about yourself and your life, but you didn't tell everything. No, it's when, not an autobiography. So when are you going to write that book? Uh, if I ever do, it would be a long time from now. I've been through it once, and it was hard at times. Why go through it again? Why relive some uh, things that almost killed me? Why, why relive them again? I'm not ready for that. I'm enjoying today.
She's regained her looks and her health by losing the 60 pounds that she put on during her last marriage. It was a major battle, but not the first one she's fought to save her appearance. It's funny how any announcement I make turns into a marriage. <laughs> Whether it's making an announcement about her popular new perfume, Passion, or talking about her book, Elizabeth Takes Off, Elizabeth Taylor is cause to celebrate. At 56 years old, she's riding high on a new wave of popularity that's all come from her losing 60 pounds in the last five years. It all started in 1983. Looking at myself with complete honesty and seeing myself really for the first time in years, uh, naked in front of a mirror, not a pretty sight. This is not the first time Elizabeth has taken action about her looks. At the very beginning of her career, in the early 1940s, she got into an argument about her appearance with her movie studio. That argument could have ended her career before it started. Well, there was Elizabeth Taylor, the commodity that was owned by the studio. And the studio tried to take that commodity and make it theirs. They tried to change my looks, my name, uh, uh, they would like to have made me a puppet. Then there was Elizabeth Taylor, who is me, that rebelled against that and said, um, no, my name is Elizabeth, that's what my parents gave me. And my father helped and said, no, uh, you're not plucking your eyebrows, uh, that's what God gave her, it's good enough for us. Then when I was about 15 and started wearing makeup, they wanted to change my mouth, it was, uh, in those days, sort of Joan Crawford square mouth, and I said, I look ridiculous with that. I've got a very sort of defined mouth, and it looks like I've got red smeared all over my face. It's, it's silly. They wanted to make my hair brown instead of, it was black. They wanted to change everything, and I said, why did you then hire me if you want to change me? Uh, I am who I am. I am the person that my parents gave birth to, and I'm the person that God gave my parents. So if you're not happy with me, let me go. Today, Elizabeth is just as feisty with movie makers when it comes to her looks. Recently, director Franco Zeffirelli actually asked her to gain weight to play an opera diva in a new movie about composer Toscanini. And at first I said, hell no, I'm not going to do that. It was too difficult to take off. He said, it's only 10 pounds, and you don't look the period. Then I got to Italy, and I saw the rest of the cast. They were real opera singers, and I did look very skinny. They were ample. Those ladies are ample. So I thought, oh, well, 10 pounds. It'll come off easily. So I'm in the middle of dieting as we speak. Elizabeth Taylor never wants her looks to fall apart again because, stardom aside, Elizabeth has one very important motivation for staying out of the refrigerator. Yeah, my tight jeans. You know, I haven't had anything to drink for two and a half years. Uh, I became a chocoholic. Mm. And when I was feeling sorry for myself or wanted a little reward, uh, it would be the old chocolate. So I lost all the bloat and put it back on in good solid fat. And I thought, you know, after I'd cleaned my act up inside, that it was time to clean up the way I looked because I really was getting fat. Why do you think you got fat? Uh, I was unhappy. Um, I was lonely. The last time when I put some weight back on because I lost 45 pounds two years ago and I put back on about 25 pounds and I'm a very perverse person. <laughs> My friends were saying, Elizabeth, you know, you're beginning to put weight back on. And it, it just sort of crept up on me because, well, I was um, sick for three months. Then another two months, so five and, a half year, five and a half months out of last year, I was flat on my back with my back. And there was a lot of self-pity involved. I go, oh, poor Elizabeth. Well, let's have a little reward then. <laughs> and it would be, you know, chocolate, ice cream, and hot fudge, and people would send me candy, and I'd eat the whole box. <laughs> and that was my uh, reward for poor Elizabeth. When people say, you know, you've got to lose weight, I just put my heels in. Mm. And 
I thought, I've got to take things out and put them on the table and decide, you know, it isn't just the pain. Uh, it isn't being physically immobile. You know, why am I doing this to myself? Why am I so lacking in self-esteem? Uh, if I'm lonely, why am I lonely? Uh, it's individual to each person that has a problem. I really don't know very many jolly fat women.